Right, so this shows me that it's recording now. When I press the stop button, it will stop. I've decided to use QuickTime Player because it is already an app inbuilt into the Mac, so um, it shouldn't take too much um, of my memory and space while I'm doing this stuff. Um, this is my source text here. So I have two pages. Um, a source text and a target text, but I prefer to have my target text next to um, the internet. So I'm going to swap these around here so that I can get to my dictionaries, my online dictionaries over here. I've decided not to do too much research beforehand so that it would be more interesting when I get to the task of translating. Here are my dictionaries of choice. I've chosen word reference because it gives you um, multiple examples of what lang of of context and what the word is that you might want to use. So let's do uh, an example here. So if I say text um, entered in there, then I can have multiple examples of words that I need to use. So we have SMS, as in text message, etc. Then in reverse of context, it will give me examples of the context in which the word is used. So if I have version, then that will be um, my target text here. So. Uh, or, or version, um, but it, yes, uh, obviously I'm going to have French into English rather, so let's do that quickly, and then we can change it here too. Hmm. I'm wasting a bit of time, so let's get started. Um, I don't usually do this, but because it's a... a um, uh, one long block of text. I'm going to do what Dr. Fotheringham did in his example. I'm going to break it down into um, sentences. Right. So we're breaking it down here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Right. Okay. I usually go paragraph by paragraph, but here we're just going to go sentence by sentence and I think it will be easier to follow what I'm doing as well. Right, I think that's it. Okay, let's start. So, Juliette Caruso. Um, <laughs> I'm very tempted to say is a young chef, but because it's a title, I'm just going to ignore the verb. Young. Oh dear, okay. I'm running into problems now because I didn't change the language, so I'm going to change language here. Tools, language, English. UK, thank you, default. Yes. Okay. Um, you can say autodidact, but I'm going to say self-taught because it's a magazine article well it's it's from L online which is a, a magazine um, generally for women but it's a fashion magazine so anyone can read it um, for ages between I would say 18 and maybe 60 um, but it's it's a trendy magazine so let's say it's self-taught um, young Self-taught traveler. Mm. Young chef. 
Mm. Okay. Traveling chef is say bouger. Um, okay, let's just translate it for word for word, and then I'll change around the words. Is making waves. I think that's fine. Making waves in the gastro. In the food scene in the South American American gastronomic scene. I'm not happy with this word. Um, okay, I'm just going to research it, but. Here, I think I'll have portrait gourmand. I, we can use that as a borrowed word, but I'm also not happy with that, so I'm gonna research this here. Gastronomique. Um, uh, <laughs> oops. Gastronomic. There we go. Um, gourmet. Yes. Fine dining. I think that's nice too. Um, let's see what the context decides. decides. Um, often you'll have articles here. Gastronomic. That might... Culinary, I like that too. Let's see. Okay, so Julieta Caruso, young, young self-taught traveling chef. This is a bit of a mess. I'm just going to highlight this word um, and let my brain think about it. And, oh, that's a bit bright. I don't need to get distracted. Well, oh, sure. Mm. Right. Okay. Um, is ma is making waves in the South American culinary scene? Yeah, I think that's nice. Uh, oh no. Let's get rid of the highlight. Okay. In the South American culinary scene. Um. Gourmand, we decided that we would look at that. Well, at least I did. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Gourmet. Yeah, I think so. I just want to see if there are nicer words to do this. Gourmand. Mm. Foodie. Foodie port, no, that won't work because a foodie is not what she is, she's a chef. Um, well, the writer of the article, I suppose, is the foodie. Um, portrait of a chef. I'm going to come back to this one because I think... Oh, wow. I don't know why, but I'm feeling very challenged right now. Okay. So, there are some destinies. Oh, sure. Okay. There are some destinies that are of... Qui sont autant d'évidence. Okay. Let's... I'm going to go down here now because I think I've missed out a thought um, that is in, okay, let's have a comma, in any case, the thought is 
that emanates from the plates. Obviously, this is not uh, emanates. Yes, from the dishes, not plates, of Julieta. Uh, and one torrid, torrid afternoon in Buenos Aires. Okay. Um, Julieta Caruso, oh, no, that's a mistake. Julieta Caruso, young self taught traveling, sh uh, a young self taught traveling chef, is making waves in the South American culinary scene. Portrait of a chef, I think, in the English convention, they're more likely to use a semicolon. Or even in a magazine, this would be in italics. So I might do that later. There are some autant d'évidence. Okay, I'm going to do that now. Autant de right. As many, just as much, just as many, however many. Okay, this is, I think, time to go back to my source text to read it um, in its fullness. Okay, there are some destinies that are autant d'évidence. There are some destinies that are That are just meant to be. I don't know how you would. Sans de temps d'évidence. Now, this is where reverse of context comes in handy. Comme autant d'évidence. Partout dans le pays, nous considérons les avancées comme autant d'évidence. For granted. Oh, golly. Glaringly obvious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. Just meant to be readily, okay. Et ceci avec d'autant plus d'évidence. Are available in all of them, and all of them were readily. Evident, highlighted, ensured, clearly, okay. So, um, There are some destinies that are clearly defined. I'm not really happy with this, but I'm going to come back to it later. Um, and maybe even just highlight these texts in a different Hello, to make it more obvious. Um, that's not orange yet. Huh. Okay. Mm. Right, okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's going to be orange too. That is, in any case, the thought. Uh, qui fut devant? 
Fuse, fuse, fuse. Um, bursts forth. Streams burst out. Um, yeah, I think. Um, this is fine for now, but it's it's not going to. I'm just going to do the whole thing and then um, decide afterward how I feel about each choice I've made. I think some of them are a bit um, hasty for now. I'm not quite sure how long I've been doing this for now. So. Okay. Dans le quartier trendy de Palermo, tout fait penser à l'Europe, excepté peut-être les palmiers et le ciel si bleu qu'il en pique les yeux. Les yeux. Okay, in the... Let's go back to RNG so we can see what we're doing. In the trendy uh, district of Right. Oh, I also thought trendy was an English word, but obviously not. Um, Palermo, or oh, maybe it's just uh, slang. Okay. Yeah. Um, everything makes one think. Oh, that's what's happening. Is uh, taking my concentration away a bit. But there's nothing much I can do about it. I just have to. And keep the language on English. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, thank you. Everything makes one think of Europe. Everything draws back to your mm, except maybe may, except maybe the palm the palm trees and the sky so blue it hurts oh. Maybe so bright it hurts your eye. Uh, no. But I think that would just be an error. Um, everything harkens back to Europe. That's a bit old English. Okay, I have to now just copy and paste to keep the language on English. Um, that's unfortunately what's going on with my computer right now. So. Okay, I think that's okay, um, right. The facades are majestuous, are, uh, ooh, that's not English either, are uh, majestic. Oh, <laughs> I, I can't even see what I'm doing here with my spare hand, that's really terrible, thank you. Goodness, oh, water grid. The facades are majestic. Um, I think because of this intensifier here, the facades, elles sont majestueuses. Pardon. Um, excuse me, sorry. The facades are indeed majestic. Let's see if there's a nicer English word that fits the context. Majestic, stately. I think stately is a nice one, but I'm also going to look in here to just check if there's a nice other word that I could use. Majestious. Um, magnificent, stately. 
really go and create sort of mm, ah indeed and create sort of mm, I think majestic is fine for now. Let's just see. Um, okay. Especially that of Casa Cavia. A magnificent uh, 1920s building. That houses Maison d'édition. I'm actually not sure what that is. Um, publishing house? Oh, I don't want to use that. Maison de. Okay, there we go. Mm, publishing house. Yep. Okay. A publishing house. A book store, a florist, and a. When I read this the first time, I thought this might pose a problem. A restaurant bar, uh, a bar and restaurant. Um, Kitchen of Casa Cavi. Maybe let's just have. Actually, this might be. I, I was going to translate this as the and then have Cucina de Casa Cavia, but I'm just going to look it up quickly because I think that this is the full name of the restaurant. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> you can see all of my terrible um okay. Casa Cavia right La Cucina Casa Cavia Oh there we go there's oh there's the full name of the thing um Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. No. I think that this is the best way. Casa Cavia La Cocina. The kitchen. Okay. Um. Yeah, because Casa Calvi is the building. Okay, now I get it. Right. Um, sophisticated. And, oh, what am I doing? Sophisti. Catered. What? Oh. And simple. Modern and classic. This, oh, okay. This oasis. Fleury. Uh, well designed and floral oasis. Maybe I should just look at pictures of the actual restaurant and then I'll understand what they're trying to say a bit better. Um, hmm, it would help if this were in English. I'm sure that would say okay. So this is the the art 
very many pictures. I want to start watching this video, but I know that um, the website won't. Um, sorry, QuickTime won't pick the sound up. Um, okay. I really want to see pictures of the actual house. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so maybe Fleury here is would be elegant first time. Let's see. Oh, pardon. Fleury. Um. Fancy, elaborate. That is more like it. Although I want to watch this video, I need to make sure that I'm doing the translation. So. Uh, casa Cavia La co Cocina um, And then I can just look at the images online instead mm. Grand is definitely Okay, uh, obviously there are books because it's inside um, a building with publishing houses. Okay, oh, oh I got that wrong. Okay, um, and X, uh, control V, please. Right, especially that of Casa Cavia, magnificent 1920s building that houses. A publishing house, a bookstore, a florist, and a bar and restaurant. Casa Cavia's La Cucina. Sophisticated and simple, modern and classic. This design. This. Uh, grand. Oh, crumbs. I forgot what. This uh, elaborate. Hmm. Uh, okay. And well designed oasis. Is in the image of Giulietta. Um, um, looks just like Julieta. Looks just like Juliet. Is just like Julieta, maybe? Mm, then elegant would work better because we're trying to get it to um, fit both. And flowery in English, I think that would relate more to, um, I'm just checking that <laughs> the, the recording is still going on. I think flowery in English would uh, refer more to language and even might have a um, negative connotation, I think. Um, okay, so between... Two courses. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, that's got to do that again. Right. Between two courses.
forces. The Bariloche natives, this native of Bariloche, uh, that in my opinion sounds a bit rude. So the Bariloche native, um, but how do we get Patagonia in there? Um, uh, this. Okay, and I'm also not sure that Bariloche. I'm sorry, I'm not making sense. I think that Bariloche must have um, a um, okay. Okay, I I thought that it might have a. A, a translation into English. San Carlos de Bariloche. Uh, maybe that's not even how you pronounce it in natural, but it doesn't really matter. It is also called that in English. Okay, the Bariloche. Uh, mm, 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 this. Native of Varilosh in Patagonia. Um, tells the story of. I'm adding the story in here because you can't say tells of. Oh, well, you could say tells of her discovery. Perhaps that will unclutter the text a bit, but tells the story of her discovery of um, cooking cuisine of um, cuisine. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure that this is the best way to do this. In high school. Her side jobs. Uh, okay, so a small small job in parallel with her studies um, while she was stu studying philosophy oh, I need a capital letter there philosophy oh, and I'm not going to have a comment. Well, maybe I need to. Okay. And her departure for years um, convinced that. Um, this literally means that it was necessary that she may go to the or origin of port cuisine. But I think because it's English, because it's a magazine, she had to go to the origin of her of Port Cuisine. I have used a borrowed word here, but I think in, that's more natural. Port Cuisine instead of Gastronomie. Um, oh, okay. Between two courses, this native of Bariloche in Patagonia tells the story of her discovery of cuisine in high school. Uh, okay. 
her side jobs while she was studying philosophy and her departure for Europe, convinced that she had to ooh, travel to the origin of thought quickening. Okay, I think that's fine for now. I'm just going to and save. Oh, wrong. Right. With with some savings. Uh, with some savings that she. She earned in Portugal, then in Spain, where she was ambushed, um, where she worked under. Let's, I'll look it up just now. Nugarets. I think this is a person, but two Michelin star. <laughs> Maybe it's a uh, it's a restaurant. Not too far from. Uh, the Vatican. All right, okay, with some savings that she earned in Portugal and then in Spain, oh, no, 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 I, that was a complete misunderstanding. Ok, avec quelques économies, elle gagne pour le Portugal. Ok, with some savings, she went to... She went to... Portugal. Then to Spain, where she worked under Mugaritz. Ok, so now I'm going to look... Up on Bushi. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. On Bushi. She was a new recruit. Um, employment. Hired, okay. Sit. So. Uh, hired himself, what? No, okay. Worked under, signed up, took a job under, I think worked under is fine here. Worked under Mugaritz. I'm just going to lock up Mugaritz just in case I'm getting it wrong. So I can understand this better. Oh, okay, so it is a restaurant. Chef under Luis Angelis. Okay. So it's not worked under. At the Mugaret. Okay, not far from okay, fine. Oh, and there we have it. Um the chef that I just learnt about now. Okay. It just shows you the danger of not having enough of a enough of a um, portion of text. My segment was too short. So there, Andoni, Luisan. Oh, they must have they spelt it wrong incorrectly. Did they? Oh no, Angelis. I thought it was Angelis. Okay. Um. Mom, once again, <laughs> they formed a 
her into the ultra fresh or ultra trendy mm. and oh mm. Um, she Traduira tous les échelons. She um, She climbed up all the steps. She 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 gained How would I say this? I'm not really sure. Uh, and also I'm going to need to add something in here because in English this isn't really she is today okay she took all the steps until she jusqu'à diriger les cuisines pendant deux ans. Uh, uh, directing the kitchens, no, leading the kitchens, managing the kitchens. What? How do they say it in English? Um, mm, uh, directing head cook head chef can you call her that head chef for two years Okay, um, I just left a space there to show myself that, um, I haven't really, that there's a mistake here. Okay, I'm going into she Javira. Maybe there's a nicer way to say it. Javira. She climbed up, she worked her way up, I think. Yeah, she rose to the top. It will be nicer. She rose to the um Uh, that also doesn't sound so good. How long do I have left? Not very long. Okay. I'm just going to keep going. Presque Juliette à la bougeotte. I'm not really sure what that means. So... I'm just going to translate the other sentence quickly and then we'll see what happens and I'll get there. Okay. Tired of the never ending days. A rallonge, let's see. A rallonge. Is that? Double barreled. Mm. A rallonge. Uh, it's drawn out. Long winded, exhausting days. Tired of her. 
I think neither ending is nice, although it's a hyperbole. Um, it, it sounds nicely. It, it sounds nice in English. She. Black. I'm not actually. I don't know what black means. So I didn't look it up. Blackie. She packed up for. Oh. Oh dear. Okay. Here we go. Flattened press. Fence over. Push to ditch. Twelve. No, I mean this. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Okay. She. Okay, she left everything for Asia. Japan, Vietnam, Korea, India, oh, the Philippines. I mean, I've spelled that incorrectly. If I two P's, remember that makes sense. Singapore. Ubudana. Country. Country. I'm just finding here that I haven't divided these, but that's all right. Okay. Uh, at the end of the year, I think by the end of the year. She returned to South America for love at 32, Julieta, oh, Julieta decided to Uh, exercise your talents. Mm, that's not very nice, but let's just do it for now. Her talents in the country of her birth. Tu te restes à faire. Much was left to be done. Mm, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Mm, that sounds a bit silly, but sourcing products with making connections elevating the average level of shift um, transmitting, uh, transmitting, teaching the know-how, um, uh, 
I think savoir faire is fun because that's a very commonly used borrowed expression. Um, Transmettre, I would like to know what a better way of saying that is. So I'm just going to leave that. Transmettre. Um, passing on. Yeah. Yeah, that's much better. Spreading. Her know how. Um, faire connaître l'Argentine sur la scène culinaire mondiale. Um, getting people uh, making Argentina known no the world Culinary scene. Mm, I think I translated that differently earlier, so I'm gonna have to look at what I did. Okay, by the end of the year, she returned to South America for love. Uh, for her love of it, maybe. At 32, Julieta decided to exercise her talents in the country of her birth, Argentina, explaining that here much was to be done, sourcing products, developing connections, elevating the average level of chefs, passing on her savoir-faire and getting people to know. I'm going to have to and because in English the end of a list has to have an and. Getting people to know Argentina in the world's current. Uh, no. That is, yeah, no, that's not good. I'm just going to highlight it for a bit. Mm. Mm, okay. Decidedly. And ambitious. Julieta is before all else a formidable. Instead of saying girl, I'm saying woman because I think particularly now saying go with it's it's um it's a bit diminutive okay who doesn't although she is young hesitate to share hesitate that's not english to share her world Son univers. Univers in French doesn't really mean universe in English. Always. It's it's in English we have her world. With the uh, food addicts, maybe foodies. And I'll put it in scare quotes here. Because it's also not an English word. De passage, let's see, traveling foodies, de passage, mm, yeah, oh, visiting
somewhere. Was the letting free? Okay, and because she is Argentinian, that's why they've decided to use this buen, buen provincial. So I'm just going to keep that as it is. And people can look it up if they want to. I, I think that's the, the decision that the author of the article made. Okay, so now let's go back and maybe yeah i'm just going to delete all of this because i i can still go back to my original text here and um check everything else we i i need to make sure that everything rolls on well um so everything is connected Oh, I, I forgot to finish that sentence. That's kind of a major problem. So let's see. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, And then I'm going to change the text back to black so that I can see what I'm doing afterwards. Oh, that's not hers. Oh, I forgot about this. Reste que Julie attend à la bougeotte. What is a bougeotte? It was only Julietta remaining at the... Wanderlust, itchy feet. Est que a la. Let's see here. Maybe I can find something with a few matches, even though this isn't a complete sentence. Hmm. Uh, Julieta was left with itchy feet. Uh, she and so she was, but Julieta still had, had itchy feet. Um, Wanderlust is much better, I think. Bourgeois. Let's. Wanderlust. It is travel bug. Restless. Was still restless. And then it's also kind of um, a pun because of uh, as long uh, her long days. And okay, at the end of the year. At the end of the year. Mm, decided in English. Okay, I'm just going to read the entirety of this text before deciding what kind of changes I, I need to make. And I'll, I'll um, make it, I'll change the lines so that I can read it better. Okay, Julieta Caruso, a young self-taught traveling chef, is making waves in the South American culinary scene. Portrait of a chef. There are some destinies that are clearly defined. Um, 
That is, in any case, the thought that emanates from the dishes of Julieta. One, oh, this, this is just, that does not make sense at all. So I'm going to go back and look at that. In the trendy district of Palermo, everything makes one think of Europe. I have no idea what I was thinking. This is, well, okay. And now I'm, I'm really running out of time to make the changes. Um... Uh, the Uh, everything seems like it came um, the ambiance the every um, I think I'm just going to change this entirely. Um, one might mistake it for Europe, except except maybe for. Yeah, in the one, one might mistake themselves for in the trendy district of Palermo. One might mistake themselves, mistake himself for being. Uh, one might. Because of the himself herself debate, I'm going to sign I'm going to change it to you. You might mistake yourself for being in your in Europe, except maybe for the palm trees and the sky so blue it hurts your eyes, and then that will tie nicely um, your and your. Right, the facades are indeed majestic, especially that, so here we go, we have the Europe, majestic, maybe grand, hmm, the fa facades are indeed majestic, especially that of Casa Clavia, is it, oh no, okay, especially that of Casa Clavia, a magnificent 1920s building that houses a publishing house, a bookstore, a florist, and a bar and restaurant. Casio Cavia's La Cochina. Sophisticated and simple, modern and classic, this elegant and well-designed oasis is just like Julia. Between two courses, the native of Bariloche in Patagonia tells the story of a discovery of... I'm going to use, a, I think it's called a metonymy. The kitchen in high school. Her side jobs while she was studying philosophy and her departure for Europe convinced that she had to travel the origin of Fort Cuisine. Travel to the origin of Fort Cuisine. With some savings, she went to Portugal, then to Spain, where she worked at the Nogares. Two Michelin stars, not too far from San Sebastian. There, Andoni Luis Andurias. Is there a problem with what I've formed her 
Uh, I'm going to make this a. Uh, okay, there was no comma. Formed her into the ultra fresh and ultra gourmandise she is today. Frais. Frais. Fresh. Trendy. Maybe. What? What does it. What was the actual word? I can't remember the original word. Frais. Cool, ultra cool. Cool is yeah, that that's a nice um, translation. Uh, hmm. Formed her into the ultra cool. Uh, gastronomic. I already looked this up, so I'm not sure how I forgot it. Gastronomic. Mm, fine dining, food for two gourmet. I'm gonna. Gourmet chef, maybe. And all ultra gourmet chef, ultra cool and ultra gourmet chef she is today. Right, uh, she rose to the top until she was in charge of. Um, she climbed the ranks. Until she was in charge of the kitchen for two years. Uh, until she. Became for two head chef for two years. Julieta was still restless because reste que I said reste que. Um, I'm going to add this intensify or intensify was however so restless tired of a never ending oh never ending day that's an error tired of a never ending day she left everything for asia japan Viet okay uh, uh, tired of a never ending days she left everything for Asia, Japan, Vietnam, Korea, India, the Philippines, Sing and Singapore. At the end of the year, she returned to South America for, uh, for her love. Maybe we can just say for love. Although in English that does connotate romantic love. At 32, Julieta decided to exercise her talents in the country of her birth, Argentina. That explains that. Explaining that here much was to be done. Sourcing projects, developing connections, elevating the average level of chefs, passing on her savoir-faire and getting people to know uh, In the uh, getting people, um, acquainting people with Argentina, acquainting and uh, oh, acquainting oh, oh, oh dear. Uh, I wrote a quantum. Okay, acquainting the world, the world's culinary scene. 
with Decided and ambitious, Julieta is, before all else, comma, a formidable woman who doesn't hesitate to share her food with visiting foodies. To share her world with visiting foodies. Wearing Florian shorts. Okay. That is an impressive look. Uh, the thought that bursts for. I remember thinking that us yet has a different meaning. I'm just going to look it up quickly. Um, the seat of oh, that's it. Um, attitude pitch, but that was aviation, so that's not merit. Dish K A S F A from Julieta's dishes. I think that's fine because you can tell that interview happened. Self-taught, well-traveled chef. That, I think, is all right. Julieta Caruso, a young, self-taught and well-traveled chef, is making waves. A young A young, self-taught and well-traveled chef is making waves in the South American culinary scene. Portrait of a chef. Voyages. She is a traveler, but I think this makes more sense in the context. Right. I think that's going to cap it at about one hour and ten minutes. I'm not sure how long I've been at this. Um, okay. Julieta Caruso, a young, self taught, and well traveled chef, is making waves in the South American culinary scene. Portrait of a chef. There are some destinies that are clearly defined. <coughs> Excuse me. That is, in any case, the thought that bursts forth from Julieta's dishes one torrid afternoon in Buenos Aires. In the trendy district of Palermo, you might mistake yourself for being in Europe, except, maybe, for the palm trees and the sky so blue it hurts your eyes. The facades are indeed majestic, um, especially that of Casa Cavia, a magnificent 1920s building that houses a publishing house, a bookstore, a florist, and a bar and restaurant. Casa Cavia's La Cucina, sophisticated and simple, modern and classic, this elegant and well-designed oasis is just like Julia. Between two courses, the native, the native of Bariloche in Patagonia tells the story of her discovery of the kitchen in high school, her side jobs while she was studying philosophy, and her departure for Europe, convinced that she had to travel to the origin of haute cuisine. With some savings, she went to Portugal, then to Spain, where she worked at the Mugarets, two Michelin stars, not too far from San Sebastian. There, Andoni Luis Andres formed her into the ultra-cool and ultra-gourmet chef she is today. She climbed the ranks until she became head chef for two years. Julieta was, however, still restless. Tired of her never-ending days, she left everything for Asia, Japan, Vietnam, Korea, India, the Philippines and Singapore. At the end of the year, she returned to South America for love. 
at 32, Giulietta decided to exercise her talents in the country of her birth, Argentina, explaining that here much was to be done, sourcing products, developing connections, elevating the average level of chefs, passing on her savoir-faire and acquainting the world's culinary scene with Argentina. Decided and ambitious, Giulietta is before all else a formidable woman who doesn't hesitate to share her world with a visiting foodies. Buen provincio. I think that's it. All right. And I'll save it and stop the recording. <laughs>